You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Black Box After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Black Box After Show. All right, jamming. ABC's Black Box back on tonight after a few weeks of hiatus. Hi, I'm Mindy Thomas. Thanks for joining us. It's awesome to be a fan of Black Box right now. A lot of action going on. And my lovely co-host starting on my left with a beautiful coral necklace. Uh, yeah. Please introduce yourself and then we will move on to your lovely co-host <laughs> sitting next to you in the blue. Well, thank you, Mindy. It's good to be back. Good to see you guys. I'm Teresa and I'm excited to be here with you guys. Welcome. And I am the mystery lady in blue. I'm Jade Lauren. Jade, huh? Jade Lauren, yes. loving the, uh, that's a, like a romantic, uh, I love it, <laughs> love it, pretty. love it. Thank you. Yes, and I want to just share really quickly, Maria Menounos, the CEO of AfterBuzz, has come out with this wonderful new book called The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. So guess what it's about? Diet and fitness, you know, those things we think about this time of year and we have to Try on bathing suits, yikes. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe you've already bought yours and I'm just the last person on the planet. But anyway, okay, we're gonna get into our immediate reaction of Black Box. And I'm so excited to be back in studio with you guys tonight. <laughs> I know, you were on a hiatus for it's so been long. A while. It's been three weeks. It's been three weeks, but you know what? It wasn't too long for Bickman to get his fingers in somebody's brain, literally. <laughs> uh, excuse literally. Me. But yeah, that was, <laughs> we're talking some intensity tonight. <laughs> Teresa, are you feeling intense? I'm like feeling after it. Yeah, it's episode seven, so we're right in the thick of it. The show is pulling out all the stops. Uh, I really like this episode because we get to see Catherine and Vickman's relationship really take a turn. Um, I want to go as far as saying that this is the episode where Catherine falls in love with Vickman. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. That is That's like calling... nosedive off the cliff. I wow. think it, it, there's a lot shifting in this episode. We see her pull away from Will after that awkward family dinner awkward um and they really have gotten closer i think especially with the surgery that they performed together yes so lots of ground to cover jade how are you feeling immediately after watching the show this evening? i feel that i'm starting to lose a little bit of faith in dr black oh, and oh will's my. engagement if it's going to if they're going to make it down the aisle i'm not hearing wedding bells at Got all. to have a faith, the faith, the faith. All I'm uh -oh. hearing is dun, dun, dun. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but Will had some good moves there when he was busting he out the excitement about the upcoming wedding. And mm -hmm. he was looking forward to the rehearsal dinner as the chef and kind of talking about plans and things. I don't know. It seems like reality is starting to hit him, though. And uh -oh. I don't want to jump the gun too much. But it's starting to feel like I think he's accepting that maybe she's not it. Well, let me just give a quick shout out to fans real quick and interject that you can listen to us on iTunes, rate and review the show, and we'd love to stay connected to you on Twitter, so we will give you our addresses toward the end of the show. And we've got a lot to talk about because this was just exciting to be like back watching the show and seeing what all's going on and there was lots of lots of turning going on. Lots of wondering where things are going. There's a twist, <laughs> there is a turn, there is a U-turn, there is a lot of that. Exactly. Starting off with Frankie, the, the case study. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting because he's an expert photographer and having a good time with the models and colors. And then, uh-oh, his left leg kind of numbs and he's experiencing something. Fortunately, the models knew what was going on. They took him where else but the state of the art, the cube. Best place to be for I love that anything he, like that. I love that the models knew to take him there. Smart yeah. models. Smart models. I'm loving it. <laughs> that defies. Breaking stereotypes. <laughs> exactly. That defies every stereotype that models are not smart. And when they went in, we had a few a bumbling doctors that weren't quite sure who they were. <laughs> <laughs> they lost sense of like identity. Bickman was thinking, oh, wait, models? 
here and at Owen the too. And he Owen got in too. on that action. <laughs> yeah, that was good. And then Dr. Black, you know, she had to play it cool and be like, oh, well, why don't you just let them know why they're <laughs> acting this way? So I loved how she kind of played that off because we know <laughs> she's really got some serious feelings for Bick, as she Bick. called them a couple of times tonight. We're not going to get into the romance. We're going to dive more into the case study with Frankie mm -hmm. first because, you know, this was very interesting color blindness that uh, he is experiencing as a professional photographer. And I mean, this is his livelihood and Dr. Black totally gets it. She's very intuitive and she just cares way beyond the realm of like a doctor patient Which sort I of love about stoic her. thing. Yeah. That's a great characteristic. I mean, how many doctors out there genuinely you know want to help their patients out the way right. that i mean when you love a doctor like that jane like do you, i mean that what an incredible experience maybe you've mm -hmm. had that experience i'm not going to a doctor that doesn't make me feel like they care about me <laughs> that that appointment's ending quickly yeah. i've always had good luck with my doctor and she's going way over and beyond and then of course at the end we'll have to get into that because that's some fun stuff how she and Vic kind of get into some mm -hmm. of their similar passions right. and just to tease that again all right well Frankie yeah he um he was really in for it and then they came up with uh, some type of a machine where it actually it was Dr. Lena chimes in mm -hmm. and she's like hey you know um here's this type of machine and so he puts on these glasses and then he's able to see colors with sounds. Well, I don't think he was, he wasn't able to see the colors. Okay. He was able to identify, identify the colors from the sound. And just a little correction, he was a makeup artist. Makeup artist, right. thank He's you a, for that. Yes, you're no. right. I, that's what I'm here for, that's what we're here for. Thank you. <laughs> yes. fact -checker. Yeah. I am the fact checker over break here. Break it on down now. <laughs> break it on down, break, break it, it on down, break down. It down. I really appreciate that. <laughs> keep, keep on chiming in because you know what? The fans are listening too mm -hmm. and they're hearing what I'm saying, you're saying, and we want to all get it right. And if we don't get it right, make sure and we want you to tweet us. And I also want to hear if you're bipolar, then I want to hear your take on the show and please connect with me. And I want to hear your thoughts about how the show is evolving and where it's going. Okay, so the color has gone out of my life, says the makeup artist, Frankie. Right. Thank you very yes. much. Yeah, I guess, you know, model photographer, I don't know. Who knows? It's it, it's good. It's it's in the black box. It's, that's it's that's the, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we find out that he's suffered a stroke on both sides of his brain. Um, mm. And that's what resulted oh, in uh, his loss of color. Yes. That's intense. I mean, that is intense. And I love the photography because Dr. Black at one point is sort of in, in a little bit of black and white. And there's some sound effects that kind of, again, which mm. Teresa loves sh when they show the perspective of the patient right. artistically. And so that was beautifully done as well to sort of mm. get the intensity of what he's experiencing. And I think Dr. Black really related to Frankie because, you know, he loses his color and what gives Dr. Black, Catherine, color in her world is her job. And so her fight to try to find a mm -hmm. cure for him parallels sort of the struggles that she's going through right now. Because I think sometimes we forget that she is struggling with bipolar. Mm -hmm. And I feel that it brings you back to remember that's why she's so passionate about her job and why she cares so much about fixing patients because hers can't necessarily be cured. It's something she has to live and cope with. So she, her goal is to cure people, not to just give them a remedy to make things better. But this time it was more of a challenge for her because she actually had to find a way for him to live with it and make the best of it. Absolutely. It, and that's what I love about her is mm -hmm. she tries to find creative solutions to the problem. There's never really a no. She never takes that as an answer. She always looks for loopholes and finds a solution. And her passion is so genuine because she opens up with her psychiatrist played by Vanessa Redgrave. And so glad to see her back in the show tonight. Mm -hmm. And then so her her true passion for her patients is coming out in her psychotherapy psychiatrist appointment. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is genuine, a total and total passion for her patients. And so uh, the doctor's analyzing that she's anxious about the in-laws and, and there's some analysis there about curing and healing, like what Jade was saying, mm -hmm. and the difference thereof, and just to sort of accept that. And, you know, when talking more about this, uh, the psychiatrist could see, hey, this is really important to her. So then I love the phone call. She gets the cell call from, from Vanessa Redgrave's mm -hmm. character, which is uh, Dr. Hart Trump. Mm -hmm. 
Hard Tramp. Yeah, hard, hard tramp. Thank you. Yes. And uh, yeah, we you don't need us to fact check you. You've you got, got this. You've got this, I Mindy. I'm trying to trump myself. There's a hard tramp. <laughs> okay, so um, then she says synesthesia. Yeah, that was Synes synesthesia. 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 Well, everybody okay. looks at me now. <laughs> <I know. laughs> one time the fact checker <laughs> isn't sure of which one it is. Everybody now. wants to turn to me. Oh, great. No this pressure at synesthesia. all. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. There you go. Oh, there beautiful. You go. And yes, that was the uh, the color blindness. And so then from there is how he can be treated and with therapy. And then he sends that video on the cell phone. What did you think of that, Jay? I loved it. Oh, it was his way of showing her his gratitude. And I think it's almost like when you walk into a doctor's office and you see all those cards and thank you letters. That was his thank you letter. And it does encourage them because that's why they go into the profession. Yeah, it totally. Is to help people. It fit his character. It creeped me out a little bit, but I get it. <laughs> it was a bit like a voodoo doll look, but you don't know no, beyond that. And it yeah. did speak to her it heart. And it, yes. and it created that more of a parallel between both of their stories. And he wanted exactly. to, what he did was he painted his, he put makeup on his face and like all these different co colors. It was almost like tribal zebra meets colors of the rainbow and its face is like totally ornated with all of these different colors and he's like has this like little video yeah. i don't know yeah. why i was doing this or he wasn't going he wasn't doing vogue yeah. a very old episode of gilligan's island that could have been thrown in there as well exactly <laughs> that too and i love it at the end though he says he mouths i love you and oh, you she, she, yeah she, he was like <laughs> yeah that was really beautiful <laughs> and i love that i thought that was so and it made her day. It made her feel like, okay, I have my purpose. I am doing things right. I can't, I, this motivates me even more. Right. Totally. And moving on to Miranda Archer, another yeah. patient mm. uh, that came in by helicopter from Syria. We had a little news break that was on the TV. We knew it was about to happen. And I loved personally the bold reference to the Benghazi uh you know, incident overseas and sort of the, uh, I just loved it. I loved how, where they went with that. And then the helicopter lands, she's coming in, the journalist, award-winning journalist from Syria, she's been uh, hit with shrapnel, they think. So they think there's an emergency uh, surgery. So the intensity, I love that intensity that they created. Oh, it got yeah. really yeah. intense at the cube. <laughs> Lights Never out. Never seen it like literally. that before. Yeah. No. And uh, so, so this journalist, she ends up, you know, on the operating table with all these experts. And Dr. Black, she's looking at the x-ray, the brain x-ray. Well, well, then she discovers, wait a second, this thing, this thing's got air in it. And she's like, this sucker could detonate. So, mm -hmm. you know, she, she runs in there. She runs in there. <laughs> no, we all know when I saw this, it totally grinded my gears because I, I don't know much about the medical profession. I was an advertising major for good reason. But she goes in there while they're getting ready to oper about to start operating with no, she didn't wash her hands. She didn't throw on. She oh, just well, there. it's a life or death situation. So everybody's she's thinking to the bigger wall. Picture. She's spreading exactly. germs. I felt like that was like med school <laughs> one oh one. No, no. I watched Grace and elbows if you go into uh yeah, she and you've got to put your scrubs. She on. didn't even yeah. scrub the elbows. Yeah. <laughs> As I digress. Like it's I digress. the bathroom or something. You have to kind of weigh the, the pros and okay. cons. I know. So. Blow up the hospital or wash my elbows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now Bigman was all over this thing. He was like ready to operate. I mean like yesterday because it's he's a thrill seeker he's and always yeah. ready to operate yesterday he <laughs> he's like are you ready now he's always he's born ready that's his adrenaline high <laughs> yeah yes. and who cares if the thing might detonate they're all like right on top of it they that doesn't scare anybody off mm -hmm. that was pretty amazing and they had that debate and just totally committed in there but uh yeah the thrill seeking is part of i think also the connection that was mm -hmm. because uh, you know, fingers got involved in the surgery in the and brain. Literally, yes. fingers got involved. They had to turn off the power, and they literally had just a scalpel, a flashlight, and Dr. Bickman's hands to remove. <laughs> and Dr. Black, who mm -hmm. was brought in because she actually got to study the CT scan prior so she could talk Bickman through it. And I think it was an opportunity for us to see them work hand in hand and see how well they complement each other. L liter literally. <laughs> hand, <laughs> in hand, hand in hand. Literally. Yeah, that was intense. Too. Their brains literally came together. And it was. it's interesting that sparks were flying in an operating yeah. room. Okay, yeah. and He's right after her the surgery, eye. she's like, Ian. Oh, oh yes, yeah. she did. <laughs> it was not by his la It was like, whoa, you have brought it tonight, That's why honey. I said, this is the episode where she falls in love with him. 
I think she's not aware of it yet. Oh, okay, that's the whole thing. Yeah, okay. she's not aware of it yet, but it's the seeds planted. But the the depiction, okay, <laughs> over at the in laws. Okay, let's let's really jump yes. into that because. Uh, Ooh we. Yeah, are we I'm, going there? Are you taking it there? Are we ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm okay. just excited. Okay, what are we gonna cook up? Because we're talking about Will. What's you know? brewing? That's right. Something's <laughs> in the kitchen, in the and pot. at one point, yeah, we'll say later in the show what what was really in the kitchen, the right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Way to well, start off a dinner on the yeah. wrong foot. Wrong gift. And before she bought the gift, of course, who did she run into with Esme out Doctor by the Bigman, hotel, leaving a hotel? And uh -huh. she randomly run into one another and looking she's really like, cute. Well, it I'm going to meet my in laws. And Jade, you know, what do you think about her meeting the in laws for the first time after they have been going out now? They've been engaged for a while. What is the tradition these days? I, w there is no such thing as tradition anymore. I mean, it's. I never understood like that really but they are a traditional family they seem totally like, so it, it's that's even more crazier that the mom had not met a woman that he's considering spending the rest of his life with because it's so clear that their relationship is so close except he knew he's a mama's boy she was gonna drop the hammer too well didn't they have an waited? engagement party already parents like the family wasn't there i don't know if that's a continuity mishap or if that's like purposeful like it had to be purpose? purposeful i mean yeah. after that long yes. of a period of time mm -hmm. And then, oh, that mama, yeah. she just, whoo. She, she, that is a mama's boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I haven't seen that one, sense. that is a mama's boy to a T. I've dated a mama's boy before, and she takes the cake. Did you think <laughs> that it changed things? Because that's really his stepdad, right? Because the real dad was an alcoholic. Yes, right. the dad was alcoholic, okay. made empty promises, daddy issues. But he seems to have a good relationship with the stepfather. Yeah, is it all appearances? They're just putting up appearances to kind of say like this is how we do but he really likes another way apparently i mean because mm -hmm. he's already told her that he likes the wild side of things so uh, maybe it's just a side of him that his mother doesn't know okay so she she doesn't know that he likes the wild things about her maybe that's why he's been so secretive about things with her and maybe the mom really just was saying if you're gonna marry this woman you need to bring her to the house so we can cook her a meal and get to know this girl. Yeah, and what was that phrase that she said to Dr. Black, uh, to Catherine? She says, now you better love my son, like the sun, sun the, the moon, moon, and the stars. stars. Well, not <laughs> only that, she was laying it on thick like the entire dinner, you know. Very First, aggressive. First, she gives Catherine a matching cookbook and says, you know, you should help with cooking every no, night. No, not help. You should cook. You should cook, cook for my son. He does not need to be coming home after cooking all day as a chef. Does she not realize she's dinner. talking to a neuroscientist? <laughs> <laughs> no, she, I think here. she knew. I don't think she cared. Because in her eyes, her priority and only main concern is her son. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Then well, she had to she, put in her, yeah. her two cents about the wedding. This is not looking long term because a lot of times the, uh, the parents, I think, will, embra <laughs> will embrace the person that is coming into the family like that is the number one priority ideally sure. i ideally. feel that she embraced her i think she okay. was very aggressive with the embrace almost oh. force forcing the like, relationship true. like squeezing out any other desire that she might have for anything else. and it could she be just have some nice things to say yes. but it was almost like backhanded like okay you're great and everything mm -hmm. but this is how i envision i, I think to your life with my son that she was laying like marking her territory it was suffocating. Yeah, I'm just saying. It was very suffocating. Yeah. It was totally a lot to agree. throw on Catherine, and we see her get really frustrated, and she starts answering texts from Bickman and withdrawing herself from the dinner. <laughs> Can you go more into that? Because you were really amused by <laughs> Oh, I, I love the scene when he he's texting her for advice on, on what he should do with the patient, and she says, take a picture of it. And he's like, he has a scalpel, and he's like, click. <laughs> the Instagram, like in the middle. With like a piece of flesh, though, like hanging yeah. on the t Like, what? That's this how I envision doctors dating, you know? Like, that's the kind of stuff that they're going to be texting each other. <laughs> right, because <laughs> that's your selfie. <laughs> and is, and is, is that his angle, too? He's kind of working it. Like, he knows that's their connection. We've and got something he is working in common. It. Yeah. I, that's not how the he song knows. goes. But yeah. There's a song about people having stuff in common. Okay, so is this, how are you feeling about their romance then? Um, 
Well, let's let's first talk about because I know we're getting excited about the the big yeah mm. the big finale here. <laughs> we but are. okay, but Will and Catherine are they are they becoming very unstable then because they're both getting texts from other people. He's got the uh, you know the bikini text coming in and that wasn't a bikini. Those were text? panties. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those were lace satin red oh, oh. burgundyish panties. What, and what did her text say? Ready for, for dessert. dessert? Yes. Yeah, that's a. Do you think she wants something there? <laughs> um, I was thinking about that one. Is she trying to give something is away? That, yeah. <laughs> what does my mom say? Why buy the cow if you can get the milk for free? Well, Delilah I mean, is playing it all Delilah. wrong. And then makes it look like there's some type of break in at the restaurant or something, and he goes there. She'll learn to in. that. Yes. And then she's sitting on the cabinet where he always cooks something up, and he, yeah. Well, she does her thing, but he's uh, he's a good guy, and he's and trying to hold you know say, hold his own and say you know his his relationship with mm -hmm. Catherine's very exciting at the beginning of the show. He referenced that, and and he's like, no, no, thank you. But he also told Catherine about it in the car that she had texted him. He was honest. So he was he honest. He I respected like their but, relationship, yep. but he was distrustful of Bickman. And he was um, distrustful of the text that she was getting, but he didn't know for really from who. Right, right. But but yeah, the trust issues were definitely surfacing on that mm. awkward ride back from the in-laws. I should probably tell you what's going on right now before you lose your <laughs> you mind and find out later. In your own apartment but, tonight. <laughs> but did she tell him? But she but she didn't tell him. Oh, me and Bickman were exchanging like doctor selfies with each other. No, she no. was not forthcoming with that because at that point she is feeling so, I mean, she needs an outlet. She needs somebody she can talk she to. Needs, she's about to get off those meds. That's what she's she, ready. Yeah. She's right, meds. stressed but out. We see her take her meds like she should. Mm -hmm. We do. She did. She did. And she almost wanted to go off of them, but then she did lean on her psychiatrist. And I think that helped, right. it seemed like. Uh, but she does ask about Bix whereabouts. And I notice he's got a nickname now. I didn't yeah, notice that she so had cute. called like him that it. before. Yeah, I always calls him Bix kind of... too, though. So it's like a hospital. Oh, okay, thing. a hospital. But she's thing. becoming more personable with him. Before it was Dr. Bickman. Mm -hmm. Right. There's some feelings brewing, but I think you're right. She's yeah. just not. She's aware not aware of, of it yet, but it's happening, and we're gonna see it more mm -hmm. next episode. Oh, that's yeah. my prediction. Right. Early prediction. Oh, early prediction. And we'll get it. We'll <laughs> we're get not there. We're not there. We're not there. We're not there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But you know what? Um, yeah, I totally enjoyed how the show unfolded. There was interesting case studies. Um, and then Will and where the relationship, the love triangle is going. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, Jade, I heard you have a little news for us tonight. I do have some news. Okay. Let me just. And what is this about? Is this about tweets? Yes. All right. Yeah. Yes. We're so thankful that you stay connected with us because we just we just love it. We love to stay connected and we do read everything and we try to respond to everything that we can. So Eileen Shaken tweets that Bickman living in hotels was one of the original character concepts that Amy Holden brought to the writer's room. And we should talk more about that last scene before mm -hmm. we, we delve too much into news and gossip. I think the Bickman Catherine scene at the rooftop. Okay. I mean, where we, we get to okay, really know Bigman's right backstory. Let's, let's talk about that a little dive. bit. Yeah. What mm -hmm. did you guys think? Well, I was shocked that he lived in a hotel. I know he's non-committal, but to not even commit to like owning a property or he could own like really some cool, you know, condo or something. Mm -hmm. And yet he's he's camping out at the hotels and he's kind of transient that way. Yeah. So that non committal. Was totally non committal that shows like he is Fresh just late every day. Is that a man though you wanna fall in love with? Is someone that's afraid of commitment? And you well, know I think Catherine has the potential to really change him. Mm. I mean, he's like, you know, I, what, what do you say? I like drink, I... Right, okay, work, okay. I, drink, I totally got I, Humphrey I Bogart, operate. like when they were on the roof <laughs> and he's like, I drink, I smoke, I get wild or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But he, there's a hint of sadness to that too. True. So I, I think, you know, he has feelings for Catherine, obviously, but we don't know to what extent. But I think if she does meet up with him and mm -hmm. they're at the same page, that she has potential to, to change him and make him fall in love with her oh. and maybe be a little bit more committed. Okay, so now. she'll bring out another side of him that he keeps more hidden, the generous side where he's working with the homeless people. Exactly. And this giving thing that he sort of masks with this uh, aggressive superiority. Or, let's be honest. <gasps> Oh no! Someone's mm. cynical here. <laughs> oh, a little no. cynical. The man is gonna reel it in. Yes. I'm just Let's saying. <laughs> no, I mean the man has commitment issues. 
Yeah. It's probably more of a challenge because it's not easy for him. So I don't think it's necessarily the person that he's interested in. It's the challenge. <gasps> it's the oh. chase. So for him, I feel that it could be something almost as if it's a a game to him. Because again, you're right. He's like a thrill seeker. Right. And this could be one of those covert ways. A covert, uh, you know, sort of, oh, I'm going to see until because you know men are pursuers they were just made yeah. that way they're made to go hunt and get the bison okay mm -hmm. get the bison. <laughs> go grab that bison for me hashtag get the bison hashtag get the bison i don't want a man if he can't bring the bison for me to fry it in the pan no we're thank more you like gatherers nuts and berries okay okay well i believe in big men i believe he has a bigger heart than that you just really <laughs> think he's hot and that's not why she's that. believing in him. Don't believe we've Teresa. Seen, we've I'm seen not buying it. Has, I'm not buying it, Teresa. He's got a softer side <laughs> to him, and she's going to pull it out. Is is Will the real deal, or is Bic? I think... Bic. No. No. Okay. I think Bickman is fun. And I think Bickman and her have issues. Deep issues. Not issues... Like, his issue is his commitment issues. Remember they thought he was, what, a sociopath? Yeah. Right, right. So he has those type of, and he wants to manipulate and control situations. Even if he does come across as be, in my opinion, even if he comes across as coming around and maybe wanting to change, he's going to revert back to his old ways. Right. Just like how she will always revert back to not taking her meds at some point. That's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, there I know. Was I, I feel like <laughs> Teresa was the parade, and I was the cl the cloud yeah. that just like rained a bunch of yeah. raindrops on her, and she's just like, no. Yeah. Jay, do you have any more tweets? Because these these are leading to good conversations. Good discussions. Yeah, that's I know. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's that's my right. To get him to my phone. Let's see. Yeah, he does love the chase. Bigman totally loves the chase. What you got there? Amy Holden Jones writes: Frankie hates losing color in his life. Catherine fantasizes she will lose color in hers if she marries Will. Ooh. Ooh. And this is the creator so. of the show, so I'm going to go with whatever Amy's saying. Right. Because it's She's her show. She's saying that Will isn't the one. Mm -hmm. And also remember when they go back to the Leave it to Beaver scenario at the, at the dinner yes. with the in-laws. Can you go more into that? Okay. Because I yeah. think that's something that's really cool to just expound upon. Well, Catherine's trying to kind of catch her breath after sort of being suffocated at the dinner table. And she says, can I sit in here, you know, by you, um, his, his stepdad. And, and so she's watching the TV and all of a sudden it turns into black and white. And she sees herself on the TV, like cooking in the kitchen. Oh, 50s sitcom you're the sun, style. the stars, with, and the moon, right? With medical supplies. Oh, right. Yes. And then she saw, okay, Correlation. counting the drips of the anesthesia and sort of some of that playing out. And she's needing to it, it, kind of escape and sort of get out of what just happened. Mm -hmm. And so it's all playing out in her brain, I think, as she's watching well, yeah. the TV. Well, the part that I really took away from it is when she starts saying he is the star, the moon, the sky, or whatever it is. But she keeps repeating it as if, like, she needs I mean, to convince herself that that really is the case. And then it just gets wrong. She is just not happy in that kitchen cooking that dinner every night. I mean, that no. is not her role in she, life. It's almost each time she said it, it, she repeated herself about him being the sun, the moon, the, moon, the light, the stars, or whatever right. it was. It's even more upset that she gets as she keeps repeating yeah, it. She's almost less been, convinced that she's I'm kind of surprised she wasn't like popping her wristband. She would have popped it like a thousand times. <laughs> I know. <in> <laughs> <laughs> right? And, Maybe the stirring. That's why she kept like stirring even more. Like, and, uh, wait by the way, a minute. Am I, I getting into this right now? I've heard that thing doesn't really help. You know how she's done that in prior episodes where you pop the yeah. wristband and it's supposed to help you get into positive thoughts. So tweet us and let us know if you pop the wristband, if it's, you know, if it helps or not, because I just, I, I don't know. Maybe it's it different really. for everyone. Yeah, that's true. Next episode that we do, we are going to wear some snap wristbands and we're going to snap and we are going <laughs> oh, no. to advise whether or not it works. We'll try not to make it too loud. As long, <laughs> long as we don't have to do that one dance move, the snap, drop and roll or whatever. You, anyway, Wait, okay, do it again. Well. How do you go? One more time. <laughs> one more time, Mindy. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Snap. Which dance? Okay, it went from one snap to another. Snap. That's, yeah, that's the way my, <laughs> you know black box works okay so um and just uh do you have any more i have so because, many okay, more i can just, gonna, I, yeah. it's like the tweets that keep on yeah, giving they're really helping us dive into some of these scenes that we haven't gotten to uncover yet so i'm, I'm really fascinated with what yeah. else you have and i love hearing from the creator of the show so thanks for bringing that jade
You're welcome, Mindy. So from <laughs> Eileen Shaken again, and her Twitter handle is Eileen Shake at Eileen Shaken. And she says the hair and makeup in this episode was inspired in part by Christian Dior's 2011 Haute Couture show. Love oh. that. I love that. Ooh, it sounds very elegant. Brought a little fashion into it, and that, which makes sense because the styling is so. Oh, it's so great. I love Catherine Black's wardrobe. There's about this just, whole series, Helmet Lang. She always yeah, looks incredible to me. I mean, it doesn't matter if she has scrubs nines. on or some kind of fancy outfit. I don't even know what she's wearing. It's just to me, one I'm thing, into her character. One thing for sure, ABC did not skim on the wardrobe budget because I know that she is probably wearing Christian Dior oh, on absolutely. that show. None of that came from Zara or Target. Okay. <laughs> None of that. And it's amazing. It looks great. Oh, I'm loving that. Mm -hmm. Well, so are you going to wear some of that? Do you have some of that? <laughs> no, right. I'm um, going to go shop. Can we go all go shop? I have episode. Zara. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with Zara. Okay. Let's see. Kelly Riley. This is the big news and gossip of the night. Drum roll, please. Okay. Ooh, okay, there we go. It's, this is sort of an artificial drum roll, but, but we're, but we're trying. We're, drum rolling. we're giving an E for effort, okay? Maybe the mics didn't pick it up, but there was a drum roll there. Okay, Kelly Riley has joined... Twitter. Applause. Yay. All right. And you can find her at Kelly Riley B Box. Okay. Very good Twitter. to know. Very so make sure you follow her. Can We're going to follow her. To Twitter. Kelly, we love you. Yes, we do. We love your outfits. We love your acting. Pretty amazing. Yeah, very good. Very good. Well, let's let's jump into predictions if you guys are ready. And, and I... now, you're <laughs> after Buzz TV. Who is that? Where is that coming from? <laughs> The voice of God. <laughs> it's always a great voice to hear. <laughs> okay, so Teresa, what do you have for us tonight in terms of a prediction? So I pay attention to a lot of the little details, and I was thinking about that scene with Delilah and Will, how she asked for his coat. I thought that was a little odd. We were talking about it when we watched that scene, you know, like how, what were She's you wearing She's not going to have a covering when she walks in there, right? Exactly. So I think, you know, she's very cunning. And I want to say she may use that against Will and possibly, you know, go to <gasps> right. Catherine and say, hey, like, you know, Will and I are back at it. Look, I have his jacket. Could be something some in the pocket. that way. Yeah. Good. It's almost like so, she's stalks them yeah. at the grocery store and then she just happens to have on that coat. Mm -hmm. She stalked before, she'll stalk again. Yeah. And Jade, how are you feeling about what could happen in the near future in Black Box? In Black Box. My predictions, I would say, okay, so you hit the Delilah point. Took my prediction. Okay. Oh, that was your prediction? <laughs> well, we're always on the same wavelength I know. about things. I don't even mind. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Let me talk about Bickman and Black. He offered her at the end of the episode, he says, after he talks about his awesome hotel that he stays at, he's like, and it's got a great bar. You want to get a drink with me? <laughs> and okay. it just cuts. Okay. So she she's going her. to the bar. She's going to the bar and she's going to get drunk and he is going to take advantage take, of that. Yes. Fully. Yeah. Okay. He's asking her on a date. He's not, he's not asking her like, hey, as a colleague and friend, who I get along so well with. No, they just got started to get along. He is totally trying to make the move on her, and I think he's going to try. I don't know if she'll accept his offer because I feel like the cat and mouse game has to keep on going for a while. So I'm hoping that she doesn't cave in. I hope she's a lady about it, you know? But right. like this, <laughs> I don't know like, how you could really be seen, a lady, though, if you're engaged. Based on what we've seen, this episode doesn't seem very likely. What, you think she's going to... Well, I don't know if she's going to do anything. I think she may accept the drink, but... It's still a date, and I don't think she's going to tell Will. Okay, no. and I think in terms of Will, my prediction is that she is not going to want to plan that wedding. She's not going to be into the plans. She's not even going to be into the fact of getting married and tied down in her mind to this situation that, you know, about sent her packing, basically, mm -hmm. into an episode. Uh, for her own well-being, she just did not feel the approval of his right. mother and that was very important to her she does not have a mother she does not feel approved of and you know it was like she was kind of xed out and all that mattered was hi was him well who wants to be like completely xed out i think she saw a part of will that she his family is 
it's not a dysfunctional family and she comes from a dysfunctional mm -hmm. somewhat dysfunctional she even family. said they were like the most close-knit lovely family she's ever met and she, and with the underlying current that she'll never fit in that that is not her mo okay but she's she's looking for it but it just won't ever work for her and then bigman plays on that well i think the fact that mm -hmm. she asked owen where bigman was and owen said up at the roof like she made sort of a decision there to kind of enter that territory yeah kind of but in her mind she could have played it off not paying attention to her real feelings like I'm just gonna check in see how he's doing it was an intense day we could have almost died in the operating room and they're kind of coming off of that and a lot of co-workers will get together and whatever you know. she wants to say to justify right right I mean right? I think honestly I'd pretty pretty much would bond with anybody if I just helped she perform like brain surgery and somebody's brain could have possibly have detonated and killed us Right. That's a pretty, that's a great bonding moment. Let's be honest here. Yeah, right. It's from, a good bonding moment. And we don't really know what that shrapnel was from Syria. It was uh, something that was inserted in the journalist's brain. It was like a bullet of some sort. Or like a, and then they put it into the casing where they could no longer be, uh, you know, affected by it. You know how it... it uh, the way they just dropped it in there, did you kind of... Like they just, bloop. I don't know. I, I feel if I was to put, if I had like this bullet or missile thing that could possibly blow everybody into smithereens, maybe you just take the bullet and then just put it gently inside it. I felt like they just threw it in there. Right. And what do you yeah. think? What do you think these doctors, uh, like big men, what goes through his mind when he's putting his fingers in someone's brain? I'm back to that again because I think he's just so like laser focused on what yeah. he needs to do that it's just like. Second yeah. nature to him. He right. obviously does not have shaky hands. Okay, so he's just <laughs> on it. That's it, and that's part of what makes them both thrive because she's so amazing at what she does. Very sharp, very intuitive, and then he's also. That I think they realize this, yeah. this episode that they have a lot in common, and that they work well together when they actually work together. Is that really enough for a romantic relationship though? Don't you have to have something that's beyond the, the, the working capacity? I mean sure thrill seeking and all that but where you know this this show actually continues to pose the very powerful question to me. Do you love out of your head or your heart? Ooh, mm. That's a great question to pose. So I want to hear from you fans. Do you love out of your head or your heart? Which is safer? Yes, and let us safer, know in the YouTube I would say. comments. Okay, too. and just our Twitter address is really quick. You can contact me at Mindy Charlotte Teresa. You can find me on Twitter at Teresa Law. And you can find me on Twitter at Real Jade's World. All right, thank you, Jade. Thank you, Teresa, for breaking the show down. We've had a great time with you here tonight. Thanks for joining us here on After Buzz TV for ABC's Black Box. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.